So today we're going to discuss a slightly more bizarre and slightly lighter topic. We're going to talk about these weirdos. These strange looking insects that puzzled naturalists for centuries and whose very bizarre appearance did not make much sense up until relatively recently. These are known as tree hoppers, although some people call them thorn bugs. Super bizarre tiny creatures renowned for their somewhat unusual appearance that's extremely difficult to describe because it's basically always different. And they're different because of one particular feature. The somewhat bizarre and sometimes somewhat spectacular headgear, more commonly known as the pronotum. The bizarre helmets that they all seem to possess. But as you can see from this particular image, these helmets are very often very different from one another. With quite a lot of previous studies exploring these elaborate structures and trying to understand and explain them or possibly connect them together somehow. But because they were so diverse and so different, and because some of them just contained spikes, some of them contained horns or even spheres, and some of them even had these really bizarre abstract shapes, so far most of these studies discovered practically nothing. Their function and the reason for their existence and the reason for their bizarre appearance remain enigmatic. Like what can this possibly be for? Why would these very similar bugs look so entirely different? and in some cases like nothing we've seen before. Was this just for show? Was this some kind of an evolutionary advantage? Or a way to attract a mate? Or was there something more fundamental at play here that maybe just maybe we've now just started to uncover? And so in this video we're going to discuss some of the most recent discoveries from a study in the description that surprisingly did discover one potential function these structures seem to have. And it's maybe somewhat unexpected. But before we talk about the study and the discovery, let's actually discuss these bugs first because for many people, especially if you live in Europe or in many parts of North America, you may have never even seen these before. And that's despite the fact that tree hoppers, members of the family known as Membracidae, are technically very widespread. They seem to exist in pretty much most continents except for Antarctica. And they're sort of connected to cicadas and leafhoppers with approximately 30 to 100 known species. But in many cases, most people do not see them because they're also really good at mimicry. For example, in some cases, they might actually resemble an ant. Or in more common cases, they might resemble a thorn on some kind of a plant, which is why they're very often called thorn bugs. And that's of course why until this recent study, most scientists believed that these very strange structures, these pronotums, mostly served as a type of a camouflage, helping these bugs blend into the thorny branches, presenting us with the perfect example of mimicry. And here this seemed to be really diverse. For example, some of them may resemble some kind of a dangerous wasp, preventing them from being eaten by a lot of different things. But this didn't always make sense, especially because these bugs sometimes really stood out. As a matter of fact, in certain locations, they're extremely easy to spot because they stand out so much. So here mimicry only explained certain conditions and certain situations. Other explanations included what's known as visual signaling. Maybe these were just visual signals for someone from their own species in order, for example, to find a mate. Or maybe this was just for some kind of a physical defense similar to a rhino bug. But I guess here's the kicker. None of these explanations seem to apply universally to all of the tree hoppers, and perhaps more importantly, there was actually very little experimental evidence that any of this was true. So basically all of these were just propositions and potential explanations, but none of this was physically confirmed. In fact, a much more intriguing and potentially more likely explanation from at least one study presented this pronotal helmet as a kind of a homolog for the insect's wings, essentially making this a third set of wings that some insects potentially evolved. But this particular idea, despite being initially popular, eventually was refuted by 2012. So here the question persisted. What was the true universal function for this incredible evolutionary extravagance, and did these helmets serve any other purpose? Well, at least one study decided to take a slightly different approach. What if the effects were not supposed to be visual or even structural, or basically for defense? What if this was actually electric? Which takes us to the super recent study on electroreception in tree hoppers. One of the more bizarre discoveries about insects in the last few years. With the overall suggestion from the study being that it looks like these unusual hats provide electroreception for pretty much all of these bugs. It allows them to sense electricity. Or to be more exact, it presents these organisms with a way to detect ecologically relevant electric fields that would be otherwise impossible to detect. And that by itself is super super strange and actually super exciting because 
Previously, it was always believed that only fish and certain aquatic animals can perceive electric signals, especially in animals like sharks and rays. And that's of course because water generally conducts electricity much, much better, and so detecting electricity through the air was always believed to be maybe not very viable. Now obviously a lot of animals like birds can sense the magnetic field, but not the electric field. And especially not the static electricity produced by certain events. Although here I think I have to make a small correction. There actually have been some recent studies, especially on bumblebees, that discovered their ability to detect electric fields around flowers that seems to help those bumblebees in choosing various flowers based on what's inside. And moreover, even certain species of spiders seem to assess electric fields around themselves in order to then produce something super strange. They actually create what's known as a ballooning web, the strand of spider web that's then used to propel themselves across the air but in this case relying entirely on the electric charge. Here's actually one interesting example of a spider trying to balloon. And this was a super exciting discovery that I actually was going to talk about a few years back, but I unfortunately forgot about it until now. So I think we'll be discussing this in one of the future videos, because there's been a lot of exciting discoveries. And that also means that maybe you should consider subscribing in case you don't want to miss this video. And so anyway, we have these recent discoveries that certain animals are able to sense the electric field for their own unusual purposes, with the flying spiders of course being one of the strange discoveries. But a much more relevant discovery was made in regards to caterpillars. Turns out caterpillars can also sense the electric fields, although in this case for a very different reason, usually for detecting certain predators. And specifically, certain predatory wasps that are known to prey on certain caterpillars. And turns out that one of the reasons why caterpillars have so many hairs, and usually in a very specific position, is because it allows them to sense certain electric fields produced by these wasps. Here, when a wasp approaches a caterpillar, it actually creates an electrostatic charge, which then forms an electric field around itself that interacts with the caterpillar's hair, but only when it produces certain frequencies. And so when these frequencies seem to match the beating of the wings of the wasp, this physically alerts caterpillars, very often triggering defensive behavior like coiling or even biting. And this was only discovered last year, which of course presented the scientists from this particular study with a new idea. What if this is what's happening here as well? What if these bizarre structures actually serve a kind of an antenna function, serving as a mechanosensory organ, allowing these bugs to perceive the electric fields from something else. But obviously having a hypothesis is great, what about experimental evidence? Well, that's where the study gets super interesting. Because here scientists decided to try to prove this hypothesis by using tree hoppers, especially the ones whose pronotum seem to be covered with certain setae or mechanosensory hairs, and by using certain predatory wasps. But the first question they wanted to answer is, do tree hoppers and their ecological partners even generate detectable electric fields? And so here they wanted to measure what's known as the net electrostatic charge for both wild tree hoppers and the predatory wasps that often use them as a snack. With the answer being a resounding yes. All 151 individual tree hoppers measured carried a non-zero net electrostatic charge with about 84% of them being positively charged. You can see the graph overall right here. But even more fascinating, predatory wasps and even certain bees seem to carry a significantly different electrostatic charge, both in terms of magnitude and polarity. And here wasps generally tended to have much higher charge magnitudes and were more often negatively charged, while bees were usually positively charged, which actually meant that tree hoppers have enough raw electrical information to potentially distinguish a predator from someone who's neutral or even mutualist. In this case, some kind of an ant or some kind of a bee. Or just to rephrase this, these electric fields, in theory, could allow them to sense some kind of an enemy, even at a relatively far away distance. But this obviously did not answer the question of, can they? Or to be more exact, do tree hoppers respond behaviorally to any of these electric fields? So can they actually sense them? And well here the behavioral experiments were conducted with the adult Popea capricornis when exposed to controlled electric fields of 750 volts in order to mimic a potential predator. And turns out that they were indeed significantly more likely to retreat from the electrode when the electricity was on. This was a direct behavioral proof that tree hoppers can indeed detect electrical fields and even perceive them as a threat. With the next question being, okay, so how are they detecting this? 
where these electroreceptors are located. And this involved morphological examinations using microscopes, revealing abundant mechanosensory setae, or once again this unusual hair, that seemed to be also present in at least two different types. The ones that were more erect, and the ones that were more pit type. And at least one test, using laser Doppler vibrometry, showed that these erect type seta seem to mechanically respond to certain frequencies, especially 182 Hz, that surprisingly seems to match the frequency of the wing beat of a typical predatory wasp. Which actually is a pretty strong confirmation that these unusual hair seem to act as electromechanical detectors of a potential predator. But importantly, this was just the hair and not the entire structure. So not really the entire pronotum or their unusual funky hat. But so far the conclusion was that tree hoppers can indeed detect various electric fields, and it's these tiny hair detectors that seem to work like these electric sensors. And so here, so far, we only had a partial answer. This still did not explain the reason for these bizarre structures. And that's until, once again, another test. Apparently, the extreme morphology of the pronotum itself seems to actively increase tree hoppers' sensitivity to a lot of electrical stimuli. And this was mostly based on computational modeling. By using a technique known as finite element analysis, researchers demonstrated that certain shapes of the pronotum seem to dramatically increase electrosensitivity. And so, for example, when a typically charged predatory wasp approaches a charged tree hopper, at some points of extremity on tree hopper's pronotum, especially on top of the sharp elongated features, the electric field seems to become dramatically stronger, usually up to two orders of magnitude in strength. Or in terms of numbers, rising to over 100 kW per meter compared to just about 3 kW per meter on other parts of the body. Here the unit of kW per meter is a typical measurement for the electric field. And here this is what scientists describe as electrostatic lensing effect. Suggesting that the bizarre shapes that many of them have potentially increases the sensitivity to electric fields, basically acting like super tiny antenna that seem to concentrate electric fields in tiny tiny points. And so even though sometimes this is used as camouflage or even mimicry, the most common use for these bizarre structures seems to be the concentration of electric fields in order to increase electric sensitivity. And here the scientists identify at least five ways this seems to happen. First of all, greater surface area for charge, with a larger pronotum, basically creating a larger antenna. Second of all, more sensors overall, which also increases sensitivity. Third of all, the longer the pronotum, the more it extends into the environment, which once again increases sensitivity. Then increased electric field magnitude. Here the sharp geometry concentrates the field around the sensory structures, creating a much better sensor. And last, electrolocation. Here, by having a complicated morphological structure, and by having certain position and angle, this can also allow these bugs to sense where the field is coming from, basically serving as a kind of a triangulator, in order to sense where the danger is coming from, so the bugs can basically run away in the opposite direction. With certain seta or certain sensory hair, also very likely adding to the effects, basically making this an extremely accurate electric detector, potentially like nothing we've seen in any other species. As a matter of fact, everything in the structure seems to allow these insects to determine everything about the danger, where it's coming from, what kind of a danger it is, but much more importantly, distinguish between a potential predator and just something that kind of looks like a wasp, but is not a wasp at all. And so every single feature of pronotum seems to be designed to dramatically improve electrical sensitivity. But what's even more strange in this case is that because of this very bizarre shape and because of this very bizarre design, beyond certain distance and specifically approximately 0.2 millimeters away from the tree hopper, their own electric field becomes extremely difficult to detect, which is once again because of this pronotal shape. And which also suggests that any predatory insect that might rely on electric fields for, I guess, detecting their prey is just not going to see these bugs at all. And so here this might be an example of electric mimicry. Now this is obviously something that's just hypothetical because we don't really know if predators even use this, but based on the models this seems to be the case. And so here the study discovers something that we never knew about these insects or really about any insects out there. This unusual long-standing mystery of the tree hopper's spectacular pronotum seems to have a surprisingly elegant and highly functional answer. This is not just for show, not just to attract a mate, this might be a sophisticated electroreceptor that dramatically enhances sensitivity to electric fields. 
And if these bugs have this, there's a very high chance that some other animals out there would never consider it, potentially evolved something very similar. But in this particular case, this is a demonstration that natural selection for improved electrical sensitivity may have been a major driving force behind these very unusual, but also somewhat cute and sometimes creepy, morphological structures. Although here I guess it's important to know that electroreception is definitely not the only function for these structures. Camouflage and mimicry is also really important with many other ones potentially also using this for physical defense. But at least now researchers discovered one function they all seem to possess. In this case, electroreception. And so the main conclusion from this study is that we should probably consider examining other extreme animals, or essentially other bugs, other insects, other spiders that have these very extreme morphologies, because we might discover something very similar there as well. And so definitely a super exciting discovery, and something we'll probably discuss again if there are some updates. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. Alternatively, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.